Time now for an Analysis in Chains special segment. I want to talk a little bit about side chains. A side chain is a token or a currency that is pegged to the value of a different currency. So, for example, a false Bitcoin that can be traded one for one with a real Bitcoin or a false Ether that can be traded one for one with a real Ether. Why do these exist and where do these exist? Well, it's rather interesting. It allows uh, some powerful tools to be built. I came across this topic by accident. I was uh, doing research on a number of different cryptocurrencies and when you're looking at many different altcoins, each one has its own wallet. Some of these wallets are full node wallets. Back in episode 7, I explained we looked at wallets and how they store your public and private keys. They don't tend to store your coin, your altcoins or your bitcoins themselves. However, some of them uh, store the block headers and others store the full nodes. And so if you're storing a full the full blockchain, a full node wallet uh, on your computer, it can be quite large. And having multiple programs all running at the same time to keep track of the uh, the blockchain that your particular coin is stored on can be cumbersome for your computer. Use a lot of electricity. So I was looking at options for paring this down. I looked at some multi-coin wallets, such as the Exodus wallet, where it's storing your public and private keys. And then I was looking at the Waves wallet. And I found it very interesting because the Waves wallet allowed you to receive Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. But when you made a transaction, when you moved that Bitcoin or that Ether from one account to another or off your wallet into the main uh, blockchain, you didn't pay the blockchain or Ether fees. You didn't pay in gas. You didn't pay in Bitcoin. You, you paid in Waves tokens, in 0 .001 Waves. So the transaction fee was was in waves and which is uh, 0 0.001 waves is right now about five cents a little less maybe so it's significantly lower fees and i was like how is this possible the transactions are also much fa much faster than the transactions on the bitcoin blockchain so this is what prompted me to start looking into this and i figured well maybe what they're doing is they've created a separate token that's pegged to the value of an actual Bitcoin or an actual Ether. Upon further research, I found out that's exactly what's going on. So if you buy Bitcoin or Ether on the Waves platform, or if you send Bitcoin or Ether <clears throat> to a Waves address, what happens is the Waves system will intercept that Bitcoin or that Ether store it in a wallet owned by the Waves platform and basically put it into cold storage. And they will issue a WBC for a Bitcoin, a Waves Bitcoin, or a, I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure what the code is, but it's a, a Waves Ether uh, for, uh, for every Ether token that you're entitled to and store that on your Waves wallet. And so because it's on the Waves platform, which is proof of stake, it's much faster transactions, you pay in Waves, uh, 0.001 Waves tokens for a transaction, you have uh, much lower transaction fees, much faster usage of these coins. And you can use them with your Waves Lite wallet. So what are you trading off? You are trading off control. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how much you trust the Waves platform and what you need. So technically, your Bitcoin is owned by Waves and controlled by Waves because they have the, the private key to the Bitcoin sitting in their Waves wallet. You have the private keys to your Waves Bitcoin token, your WBC. 
And you have to trust that when you s send the WBC off your Waves wallet, that Waves will still be there and they will still honor that. And they will go, okay, well, we'll do this transaction one-to-one. -one. And uh, so it's, in a sense, similar to trusting a bank. Think back to the old days of prospecting. California gold rush, Yukon gold rush, people would go out, they would mine gold, they would get gold. And if they were going to use that as currency, they'd have to carry it in their pocket. Maybe some of it would get lost or fall, uh, fall away. Some of it might wear away because gold's a very soft metal. It might uh, grind into their pockets of their, their pants or, into the, in, in, or wear off as gold dust into their purse. And so there would be some loss to carrying it around. So it became much easier to just deposit this gold in a bank. The bank would then give gold certificates. You have three ounces of gold in, in our bank. And people would just trade the gold certificates. And this is how, this is sort of the beginning of the gold standard, of people trading these gold certificates back and forth. And that's similar to what we're seeing with, uh, with this side chain. There, there are a couple of other side chains too. There are uh, side chains for exchanging cryptocurrency between exchanges. I haven't looked into if any exchanges themselves are using side chains internally, or if they're just having internal accounting, or, or or what's going on exactly. But it wouldn't surprise me. The advantage of side chains is that you overcome some of the problems, the, the technological problems of working purely with the Bitcoin blockchain at a cost of control. So <clears throat> as this space matures, as we move toward uh, solving the problems of cryptocurrency, uh, we're going to see that we can't completely escape the need to trust third parties, the need to trust institutions to help us manage uh, these transactions and these settlements. And that could be good, that could be bad, and we may see other uh, cryptocurrencies rise from it. However, uh, wh what's interesting is that this brings up the need for regulation. I'm not anti-regulation. I'm not pro it either. I mean, it comes with trade-offs. I see everything as a trade-off. And with, with, with this side chain business going on, this, uh, it's meant to address a, a, a deep need in the crypto community for faster payments, for more fluid exchanges for smaller exchanges by having these alt tokens that are pegged to the value of Bitcoin. But by doing that, we're essentially trusting the company running the side chain if it's held by a private company. And maybe we just need to, uh, need to go there. Time will tell what, uh, what happens in the future with this. But knowledge is power. And knowing how the back end of these exchanges work and these side chains work helps us to be aware of the risks. As long as you're holding Bitcoin in a Bitcoin wallet and Ether in an Ether wallet where you control the private keys, you have control and your holding of that cryptocurrency is based on your ability to to protect uh, to protect those keys to make sure that they're backed up to make sure that your computer doesn't crash to make sure you remember the password third party institutions like banks they may be inescapable blockchain bitcoin specifically was started with the idea of going around them but now that the big players are more heavily investing into cryptocurrency, it may be inevitable 
that we will have trusted third-party institutions governed by regulatory measures. But knowing how the back-end technology works and knowing that this exists can help us know how much of our cryptocurrency we want to trust to sidechains. <laughs>